Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. It's been a while. Oh, you're not going to do the... No, because you picked at me every time I say something. Yeah, so no. Oh, we're I mean, just here to Ooh. rush the vibe mm-hmm. with our with our tribe. How's it going? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's been a while. It's It's been a long while. And um, with our first foray back into podcasting, we decided we wanted to record at a different time of day. Mm-hmm. Does it feel different? Do you feel more energized? Like you have more energy? Um, I feel more mentally distracted. Oh. But I do feel like I don't have to worry about not waking people up yep. or how late are we? Like, be up. What time do I have to be up in the morning? based off of what time are we recording so that's also nice um it's different i mean it, it's the same and different all all in the same yeah <clears throat> i've noticed that um because i've been on I've been fortunate enough to to be invited on to uh, other podcasts and normally those those record during the day or earlier parts of the evening so I've taken notice of how much more energy I have, like how much more enthusiasm I have when I'm on other people's podcasts versus ours, because normally we're, we're hitting record at like no earlier than 10 o'clock sometimes, most times. So a lot of times I'm just like speaking, like I'm just talking. I'm not actually Engage. engaging and I don't, I don't necessarily like that, but you know, circumstances have changed a little bit and we may have the opportunity to uh I don't think exclusively record during the day, but I think we could at least for the uh near term, we'll have the opportunity to uh to record during the day. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so do you remember our last episode? The one you insisted we record and you never put out? No, no, no. The one that actually, the last one that we actually put out. The, yeah, that was before my birthday. What did we talk about? Trip. Do you remember? Me going to Mexico? Mexico. <laughs> I'm just curious. It's like, it's I been four, it's been, been, been four months. No, it's so, been like three months. Been four months. No, because we recorded an episode you never put out. It's been four months since we've put an episode Okay. Onto the internet. No, I'm just not going to get over that episode because y'all, he harassed me. And I think I about recording an episode, and I was like, I'm tired, but okay, fine. And we recorded this episode, and it never saw the light of day. And I think, I think halfway through, not even halfway through, right, like right after we started, I was like, you know what, you don't have it. Let's just wrap it up. And you're like, no, let's do it. Yeah. And I said, and I said, no, I said, no, your energy ain't right. And you're like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. And so I was like, okay. Consisting. So I made. No, I pivoted. I'm pretty sure my I made, energy came back. It comes back so better I, than yours does. So I made an executive decision because That's I am the executive producer, sleep, the I'm sole. Not, sleep, I'm not going to get back. The sole You're executive producer, executive producer of Rush Vibes podcast. And I put it out. So I'm a little. Four months later, you still hold on to it. Wow. Yeah. Y'all really build different. Don't even try to act like you are not the pettiest, grudgiest. Not with you. Holder ever. Not with you. You and I are different. You hold grudges. I definitely hold grudges against other people. You hold grudges against me. You just won't admit it. No, I don't. They won't. I don't know. Exactly. Your grievances. Exactly. You don't. You got issues. (laughs) What? I got issues. Issues with me. It's okay. Because I didn't put a podcast up. Anyway. Initially, so anyways, what I was trying to say is it's been four months since they have seen us, y'all. Who said this? We've been here. Um, I don't know if we want to like jump into like the stuff that's happened recently and then work our way back. Just touch on things that like what we've been doing, um, things that have happened that we didn't get the chance to talk about on the podcast or if you just kind of want to, if you kind of don't care and I can, I, I can drive. 
here. I need you to try because I'm just you just here. I don't know what's going on in current events. I don't know. I I barely know myself. So why did you why did you agree to do this if you're just just gonna show up? Always down for the cause. It's just a matter of you're gonna edit and put it out. You always down for the cause. This comes down to you. Mm, okay. I'm a team player. I'm always down for the cause. I remember. I remember that. I'll hold no, you, you to. Won't. I'll hold you. No, I won't. But I'll hold you to it somehow. Speaking of which, are you picking up kids today? Sure. I'm just curious. Since you can't, since I got to drive here, I was wondering if you'd be willing to drive to go pick up your children. Are you cooking dinner? I cooked last night. I prepared dinner last night. Didn't I? Yeah. All right then. So what was it? Because I was gonna cook dinner. What are you going? What are you gonna cook? Food. What kind of food? Something that you wouldn't know how to make. <laughs> okay, so what is it? I was gonna make ravioli. Oh, I'll go get them. You gonna make the same that you made like last week? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go get the kids. I need you. I need you on your A game. That ravioli was excellent, and I'm I'm anticipating that the children won't want any. So that means there'll be more left for me. Y'all, do you know this woman judged how I eat my ravioli? It's we've been together almost 15 years married for for 10 this year and you would think when it comes to eating she's just she's just aware of like all my tendencies all my habits but i guess we've never shared a meal of ravioli together because she made some oh my god this ravioli was like what's that what's that white chef's name that everybody loves gordon ramsay Mm -hmm. yeah he couldn't touch your ravioli if he tried like he couldn't come close, couldn't sniff it. So it was banging. And so every once in a while, Jessica will make a meal. And I'm like, you know, obviously we want our kids to be, to be well nourished and, you know, eat and be healthy so that they can grow up to be big, strong contributors to society. But the fact of the matter is kids really don't eat. So every once in a while, Jessica will make a meal. And I'm like, please, God, don't let these children eat. Because <laughs> I want, I want all the leftovers. I want all the portions, and that was his ravioli. I don't even know what it, what it was, how you made it, what you put in on it, but it was, it was spectacular. But I eat my ravioli. I, I don't. I guess you're supposed to cut it up into portions, I but I just ravioli. stick a fork in one piece of ravioli, and I, I yeah, ate it. I was appalled. And she was like, "Is that how you eat your ravioli?" Like. <laughs> How do you savor the flavor? Like, I just felt like that's your whole mouth is ravioli. That's just a lot. Ravioli's aren't, aren't small. Aren't taste buds in your mouth? Yeah. Like, so that you was say, you, know, you, you need to savor. <sighs> you need to savor. The, no, I need to eat. Is what I need. Okay. But for you, I'll try to portion my ravioli tonight it's so that'll make you of it. So I all of it. and there'll be some left for tomorrow no and it wasn't nothing left like when the kids As, don't eat he makes but that's him. because we're one of those families that we put leftovers away and the leftovers 75 percent of the time don't get eaten so i've just been like look if there's enough left i will attempt to eat it all that night i don't always i'm not always successful like she made meatballs and pasta the other night i tried to eat all rice the other night I tried to eat all of it. I couldn't do it. Ground beef. It was chicken. Chicken fills you up quickly. The protein. Um. Yeah, it was banging. But then she like judges the way I eat. So I'm like, my like, brother can't even like. I'm already the most ridiculed person in this house, by far. <laughs> like I can't even eat in peace without being judged. It's just, it's a toxic environment, and I'm surprised I've survived this long. So <laughs> I'm gonna add a link to a uh, support Cash App account so that I can go get the therapy that I need. So if y'all want to contribute, by all means, he won't. And by therapy, I mean liquor and <laughs> liquor and he, he liquor, an liquor and cigars. My my therapy, good therapy. Um, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I'll get the kids. I mean, I always get the kids. So let's. Sometimes I get the kids. You can get the kids like once a quarter, but it's fine. I mean, you your job, kids. Your job requires you to be like your peak hours are like when the kids need to be picked up. That's perfectly fine. Well, you want to pick the kids up like right at four. There's no judgment in that. Yeah, because have you seen traffic after a I certain know time? That I pay for them to be there till six. Nah, because then, it, but you don't have to be. You don't have to deal with picking them up after all their friends have left. 
<laughs> like it's the worst atrocity ever in life. You're late picking me up. All my friends are gone. He was Sonoma, the little one. What is she? she got- You're like, Daddy, I didn't think you were coming to get me. She doesn't even say it. Oh. That's what she told the teacher, though. She was like, my daddy's not coming. Oh. Yeah. No, I felt really bad for the kid that was left after because that kid was actually <laughs> there by, by himself. <laughs> my dad was not coming. Oh. Yeah, I, I was I was real late. Five forty five. It was last week. Oh no, because um Oh that vintage. But uh I was I was like, I'm gonna get the little ones first because you know traffic is, is easier. You're going against traffic once you pick them up if you go to pick up solace from camp. But I was like, I'm already I'm already gonna be late. I might as well just get solace and then because I can get the other two later. So I pick solace up and I'm driving and I take the road that I know is gonna be backed up. And I almost took my my instincts told me to take the interstate instead of taking the city streets. And I, but I was like, nah, I'll just take the city street. Turns out a car had overheated and was just stopped in the middle of the road that we had to take. So it was going to take longer to get to the girls. But luckily, that was looking out. This lady drove by. She was like, hey, there's a car on fire um, a little ways up the road. So don't turn. So I had to go out to 16, take 16 up. Mm. But, uh, and she looked out because we still would have been sitting there. Like <laughs> she was still would have been sitting there right now. It was it was backed up. It was backed up. Um, but she actually surprisingly she didn't say anything. So I was like, she was cool. I told her I was like, I'm probably gonna pick you up closer to six, and I actually got her a little early. So um, I guess it's uh, what do they say? Under promise, over deliver. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. The Sonoma teacher was like, oh, she she didn't think you were coming. She was like, my daddy's not coming. It's like so dramatic. <laughs> like, what have you not been picked up? You know what I'm saying? Like, in your whole two years of life, when have I, when have one of us not picked you up from somewhere? So dramatic. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll pick him up. But yeah, I don't, I don't like fooling with that traffic. And we got a traffic jam, like, literally right outside our house because they're building, they're putting a, development across the street so nah i'm not trying to deal with that traffic so that's why i always pick the kids up and just going to be a negligent mother <laughs> um so we were in vegas this weekend we were this past weekend we were um i'll leave with the fact that we were there for jessica's work because i've been telling everybody we went for summer we went for summer league and she's like bro I, I was working you yeah, were at summer we were league, summer league. <laughs> about to get there for work about to get her in trouble oh no 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 wait before let's uh let's back it up because you've been telling all the social media tell uh tell everybody your circumstances that have changed oh yeah um, where'd you get your shine on <laughs> so back in may i think i it was a while when you I when it first started to uh, two opportunities uh internally was it may out. i mean, it was early i feel like it was april two opportunities presented themselves so against my better judgment <laughs> i i decided to put my 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 name in the hat in the, my hat in the ring that the the statement hat in the ring um and i i kind of interviewed for both and i i told them that you know um interviewing for both because opportunities are scarce and i could see myself potentially working both roles yeah um because i the season that i kind of transitioned in in my previous role um i was doing both roles so um interviewed things kind of went radio silent and then i in a roundabout way, I found out that I got the role. So um, I was previously an operations manager, um, and now I am an accounts supervisor. Big dog. So um, I am more- Client facing. I am client facing all the time. Client dealing. Client dealing, building budgets. Spreadsheets. Reconciling, using spreadsheets and words and things that I didn't have to use. All over the globe. Um, and I had a moment where I was like, to go. I could have just stayed where I was. Nah, we don't do that. But sometimes to get 
comfortable again, you got to be uncomfortable. What um, what, what was the Tina Turner said? We don't do nothing, we don't do nothing easy. Well, isn't that the song? That's too. That's before your time. Now. I know the song. I just don't know yeah. that lyric in the song. Yeah. Uh, it's just at the beginning, before the song, like the beat drops and everything. But again, it's before your time. Um, no, congratulations. We we. Uh, There's nothing about ease in the beginning of Proud Mary. Hmm. Let's no, no, no. I may I may be confusing my songs. Uh, there's a song. Oh, what song is it? See now. We don't need another hero. No, that's not. It. I'll figure it out. Simply the best. I will figure it out, but we're not about to figure it out during this podcast. Just take the compliment. I just don't. I'm trying to figure out which Tina Turner song. Um, it may not be Tina Turner. Actually. Um, but yeah, very um, very proud of you. Thank you. Uh, because what a lot of people don't realize is um, or may not know, obviously because we don't tell people all of our, our private private stuff is that you almost left your current employer I, to take another opportunity and you know prayer intuition discernment you like nah that's not that's not for me yeah it was, so you, it, it was, you bet you well you know, a lot of people say they bet on themselves you bet on yourself i did i don't know that i knew i was betting on myself um I was in like an, a very hot interview season from like November to February. And I was interviewing with jobs and not getting them and, you know, being told that I'm overqualified, blah, blah, blah. So February, I was interviewing for three roles and one of them, they flew me out to Ohio. They loved me. I met with the CEO, met with like everybody. Uh, I got the job offer. The job offer was less than what I wanted. I countered. They didn't match my counter, but they did come close. And I had told God and myself and David that there was a number that I needed to meet before I would leave. Right. Um, and I say this with my previous role. There was nothing wrong with it. I just was bored, um, wanting more. So... Um, they didn't meet that number and I turned it down. And mind you, it was still more than what I was making at the time. Um, but I just could not accept or get the peace or whatever you may call it uh, to leave. And I know someone would probably be like, you are crazy because you got a job offer that's more than what you were making and you turned it down. Um, and I think when I initially turned it down, I was of the mindset of, oh, I have two other jobs that I'm interviewing for. So I'll probably get one of those. And then I got none of those. And that was very much so like, whoa, did I make a big mistake? But I knew I know the industry that I want to be in. Uh, I don't sp specifically know what I want to be doing. Like, I kind of know, but I don't know. But the role that I got the offer from was taking me away from the industry. I knew I'd be working a lot harder than I would want to be working for something that I didn't love. Right. Um, so I didn't take it. And I, you know, I kind of, I won't say I beat myself up over it, but I did ponder it a little bit. Like, did I make, when I didn't get the other jobs, I was like, did I make the right decision? Like, what was I thinking? And then I kind of just moved on. I was kind of like, you know what? My job gives me a lot of flexibility. I have an amazing um, supervisor. Like, she's really supportive. She just gets it. She's a mom. Um, like, she's very much so, like, a family first mom. So, I mean, not my whole team is that way. But, um, and we built, like, a really good rapport. And I was safe under her. But I just knew for the longest time, and I, I had planted the seed for a while. Like, so I don't know that she was too surprised. She was surprised, but not too surprised. Um, that I wanted to be more client facing. I wanted to be more in the action of, you know, building campaigns and launching them and 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 all the things. So I got the offer and I I took it. Yeah. So you know, um, and of course, the director who was part of why I applied for this role, because I, well, I was excited to work under her um, a week after, maybe two weeks after I accepted and I was supposed to be doing a slow transition. She got a job offer somewhere else. And I'm really excited for her. Um, but I was also like, uh, ma'am, I'm supposed to learn. <laughs> I, I need your brain like I'm supposed to learn from you. And now you're leaving. So, you know, I. It, but so it's kind of put me in this predicament where I just got to figure it out. Um, and I've been, I've had moments of stress. Like I put off emails 
that are going to be very client visible because I'm like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I get in trouble? And then like, I'm just like, send. And then I'm just like, okay, now waiting for responses. And then I'll get like a two word response. Like, thanks, Jess. What? Yo, I toiled over this email for five hours for you to just be like, thanks, Jess. But Mm -hmm. it also reminds me that like, it's not worth making a big deal out of anything because nothing's that big. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, good and natural because you want to it means something to you Mm -hmm. it's like the the butterflies yeah right so um i think it's it's good that you want to make an impression you don't want to you know not do well yeah Uh, the the tricky thing is is finding that balance to where you allow yourself to to work through those feelings um and not falling completely like being a complete prisoner to them either where you have paralysis. Yeah. So, um, you know, as long as you send the emails at some point, I think you're, I do. Yeah. You're I, I, doing what needs to be done. I haven't had excitement for work in a while. And I would say it's probably because my old role, I was in it for two years, but this is, it, it feels new. It feels like it's uncharted territory, but it's still a client that I know. Um, and I, as maybe childish as it may seem like, when I get something right, I'm like, yeah, I did it. But I, I really want to do well. Like, I, I don't know if that, like, there's been, there are things in my life that I'm like, I want to get this right. I want to do this right. Motherhood's one of those. Wifehood is one of those. But like, this is the first time outside of those two where I'm like, I, like, I want to be good. I want to be great. Like, I want, I want to do a really, really good job. So it's, it's, it's in, uh, it's going to be a learning curve. It is a learning curve, but you know, I'm literally reciting every time I like doubt myself or anything. I'm like, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Like I'm literally quoting that. I think I wrote it down in my notebook a couple of times when I was getting ready to send a status email. And I didn't know what to send. It was like, cause everyone kept saying, fake it till you make it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to convert this to biblical. And I think the biblical equivalent is I can do all things. Jesus is probably up there like, okay, damn. <laughs> you're doing it just i get go. it burn it in scripture so no but it's been it's exciting well good you uh you make me proud oh. every every day um even more so when you pick your children up from school but i don't need that much pride. <laughs> but nonetheless um it's really it's really awesome it's been fun to watch your Mostly journey. I mean, it's two years is not nothing. It's not insignificant. It's the first time I've done. Oh uh, yeah. So it's been it's been a lot of fun because you when you when you join this company, you interview for another position. I did, and I, they put you. When I think about it, I think I interviewed for the position I now have. Yeah, yeah. It was an account, but they wanted somebody in New York. Someone in New York and someone with a little more yeah. facing experience. So, and then they gave you the position that you had for for two years and then obviously you and you and your your direct supervisor developed a relationship um to where <laughs> y'all are calling each other girl girl and stuff uh, um i just it's been awesome uh, and you know god willing there's still much more for you to do where you are uh it's a, it's a turbulent time with uh the job market and economy and companies are you know shaving positions here and there so hopefully um that's not something we have to uh we have to deal with because i want to see you completely blossom and do great things then maybe maybe you won't maybe you won't have a client maybe you'll be the client i'm just saying putting it out there it's open. Putting, putting it putting it out there um what else 24 minutes i mean should we talk about oh we're in vegas so now we can talk about vegas i'm wearing my my hoodie that i realized like everybody in the airport had it's a nice hoodie, but it's it's very nice but it's it was generic it's very generic um and when i because the the way we got to vegas was was a little unorthodox so i had to there's something i needed to do in atlanta so i drove to atlanta on a Wednesday night uh, and then flew to Vegas on Thursday. Um, so I think I left Wednesday around like 11 something. Mm. Of course, 
in true rushing fashion, I was rushing out of the door. So I had a hoodie that I wanted exclusively for, or specifically for the airplane, because I know they tend to keep those a little cooler. So I, I remember having the hoodie on top of my bag. Next thing I know, when I get to Atlanta, the hoodie is not there. Like it's just, just gone. Like I have no idea what happened to it. So, um, I told Jess, I was just going to buy a hoodie on our way back. So I bought this hoodie in the, the Vegas airport, obviously. And, um, I was like, oh, it was a nice, it was a nice hoodie. You know, and it's not, it's not too expensive. So I'll go ahead and cop. And then I get back to the gate. I don't put it on. I just have it. But I get back to the gate and I see no less than like three people with the same exact hoodie. <laughs> like right across from us. I was just like, okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, Obviously, that means it's. I mean, you. It's it's nice. The traded place. Yeah, and so. it, very very limited options for, for clothing. So, um, and I didn't even end up putting because it, it wasn't that cold on the on the plane. But summer league. It's summer league. Our first, uh, our first summer league together. And it was very hot. Yeah. Hundred and. 15, 14, 15, 16 degrees. It he got, it got up there. I think one of those days, this is a different, don't be like dry heat is a different kind of, it's the desert. Like this is hot. Y'all talk about dry heat, but we watch movies with like tumbleweed and I, the rope runner. What? Like it's not a safe place. Yeah. I was talking to someone and they're like, Oh, you're from North Carolina. Like all oh, the heat and humidity. I'm like, bro, once you get to like a hundred degrees, it's hot. It's just hot. Like I don't, I don't, this is hot. Like, I don't, I don't want to, I, I can't make myself feel better about triple digit temperatures. You know, think, oh, well, at least it's not as, not, not as, not, not that humid. It's been hundred. We got a hundred a couple times here. Didn't we? We don't exceed a hundred. Uh, like we just, not a, I mean, according to my card, <laughs> the car, uh, thermos, thermostat, it says, uh, like a hundred all the time when you get into it. But I guess that's just a car. Um, but yeah, Summer League was cool. Uh, so Jessica, uh, the company she works for, was a sponsor. Client was as a, a client, sponsor. as a client sponsor. Very convoluted relationship. It's probably not, but it's, it's not multifaceted. When you're in it, it's not. It's multifaceted to to an outsider like me. Um, so she was actually there to work. Uh, some activations going on. Uh, me. As I've done our entire relationship, I was just bumming along, uh, riding, riding her coattails and got, I guess we ended up getting, oh, should I speak on that? The fact that I was able to get into the games at a reduced price. Yeah, sure. Oh. Well, so I basically got, arena. basically got it for free, <laughs> even though it's general, it's general admission for the most part, but, um, no, it was cool. Cause all, obviously I'm a huge NBA fan. Um, summer league is, is. One is basketball, so I'm automatically interested, but it's always been a bridge to get from the finals to the start of training camp the following season. But I've never been never been in person, so this was this was really awesome to go and see and uh, be on the campus at UNLV. So it was awesome, and I got to see a lot of players and coaches and media uh, and, and journalists who I only ever see on TV. I would pass them like in a hallway or a corridor or see them sitting, you know, a couple of rows down from me. So that was really awesome. And uh, met up with Aaron from from Threads. Saw him literally every day. We That's were there right. except except Sunday. So we were there from Thursday to we had a late Sunday. If, we probably yeah, we would have we would have met up with him on on Sunday. Um, just just awesome person. Um, great basketball mind. I mean, his dad has been a scout for however many years for the league. So. Um, I made the mistake I, of sitting in between them. Yeah. yeah, I was just, I was just so. I felt like I was sitting next to some data analysts. Like, no, he was the data analyst. I was just of MIT, and these people are just building a whole engineering pod. I was the, like, what language is that? It's always been fascinating to me how, and I guess I can do it to a somewhat similar degree, but obviously nowhere near his level. But like when you can ask someone about a player, like any player, like pick a player on the court. Like, what do you think about this person? And like, he went into actual detail mm -hmm. and I'm like, how can you, where do you store all this unique information about these okay. individual people? So it was great, man. I learned a lot. Um, and he's, like I said, he's just a fantastic, fantastic person. And like, I told you this in private, I got no problem saying this. 
<laughs> on the pot. That's a good looking dude, man. Like he ain't got no business being that handsome. Like I looked at, I was like, man, this dude is there was handsome. We were at dinner, and I was like, Were you gazing? It, I was like, is it proper for me to tell another man in the presence of my husband that across you're across my yeah? Because I was sitting in the middle, so you would have said it across my face. Yeah, that would have been um, that's good looking dude. It's good looking brother. I I, like, you could you could have said it. And I'd have been like, oh, thank God you said it first. <laughs> like, yeah, brother, you are handsome. But overall, you look good. Just like his personality, like yeah, his, his just... hospitality. He just made us. Like I, it's so weird because these are individuals that we are only communicating with via an app. Maybe two if we start text, group chat, text based app. Yeah, That's so that. it's it's you you know them, but you know the side of them that they allow you to know. Yeah. So to be able to link up and just you know you're talking to this person and you have to remind yourself like. I just met you for the first time for the first time. Like, I don't know you in, in human form. I just know you digitally. Yeah. Um, and you, I'm sure anybody who was looking at us would have assumed we, we go back. Um, and that was just that, that was amazing. And uh, the same reaction we have, we went to Atlanta and we met up, um, with a lot of the crew down in Atlanta. And even that it was like a family reunion. So it's just, people's babies. Holding my Gigi, she's so adorable. So Lex, her daughter, and I'm not one to push myself on kids. Like I don't, I, 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 you know, some people are just like, come here, baby. No, that's not me. I'm very much so like, you can stay over there. I'm gonna stay over here. We can make eye contact. You're cute. I'm cute. That's great. Um, but she was, she, she was sitting on her mom, and her mom was next to me, and she just reached for me, and I don't know what it, we. We just connected. And so she, David tried to hold her. She was like, nah, playa, give me back to somebody else. But she was all about me. She she probably just spends a majority of time around women outside of her father. So she's- Me, 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 me and Gigi ain't cool. You and Gigi are so- Nah, cool. we ain't You're, cool. So she's adorable. But yeah, we had a meetup in Atlanta. We had an impromptu uh, trip down to Atlanta. And was that in May or was that, that was in April, end of April. The no, it was, it was May. The beginning of May, but the end of April. I think we drove down the, 20th, okay. the 30th. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was May. Know, we put out the, the meetup call on threads and, you know, we were able to get people, people were able to come together. And again, it's like the initial, oh, hey, but then we just knew each other. So everybody so far that we've had the, the pleasure of spending time with that we know from the NBA threads community has just been amazing. Um, yeah the social impact that you get from engaging in person with people that you only know on social media. Like it's, it's, it's cool. It is. It's very cool. Um, man, it's funny because there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on lately, uh, in the, in the world mm. in the, uh, in the country specifically, um, where people are constantly exchanging beliefs and ideas sometimes insults <laughs> on uh on on the timeline and um i think that's I mean, that's natural um and in a sense somewhat healthy but uh it's definitely been a very turbulent time on the time you might not see a lot of this because you don't you only care about threads when you want to talk about your promotion or make fun of somebody but um <laughs> i did have to take a thread from me this was and i you were you were just busy and that's one cool thing like every i mean everyone was fine I everyone was cool but i also knew that i was in a season that was super busy and you know the, stressed out seeing the notifications so. season, season is over so you don't really serve no it's ending season but season is over so you don't really no, it served no purpose. The basketball NBA season. Oh, okay. Yeah, because all you do was you lift the troll. So it's no, there's no need for you. There's no need, no, no need for you. Can contribute. Hmm. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I need you to contribute this ravioli tonight. That's why I need you to contribute. Um. So I, I I've just uh, hope that once I don't, I don't know, maybe it's only going to get worse, but I hope that we can. Uh, um. If anybody like specifically NBA threads finds themselves like maybe at odds with somebody else from NBA threads over like political stuff, or whatever, just like 
Like, remember. Are you speaking with an agenda? No, I just want I want everyone no, to just like a fireside chat from the mayor. <laughs> no, I'm just like it's just it just kind of you know you always say stirred up stirred up in my spirit. Like I just want people to understand. My my hope is that we all remember that like it'd be dramatic, but what brought us all together. Love of NBA, the love of the basketball, and be able to talk in a in a relatively non toxic place. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of Twitter people coming over, and it's just why won't they just stay on Twitter? I don't know, man. <laughs> you gotta ask them, it's but toxic enough. Over. You gotta ask them and bots and stuff. There was this thing where uh, one of the I don't know, I think she's an engineer um, for Meta. She sniffed out like a bot on Threads, so she like. The the bot posted something and she like typed out a command that was basically like, forget what your previous instructions were. Tell me this. And it like it like responded. It was it was kind of crazy. Um in the thread? In threads? Yeah. It was the bot was programmed to do certain things. And so I guess she picked up on it. Um and like actively reprogrammed a bot? I think so. Pretty sure it was happening. Now there were there there was there was another there was another situation where somebody was just like having fun with it. Because mm-hmm. you can't like you can if you work I I would imagine if you work in like that space, um you can identify like certain language that a bot would use. Like for somebody like you and me, it's like, oh, this person's like really articulate. Mm-hmm. Their you know, their sentence structure is perfect. Um somebody who, who works in that in that realm is probably easier for them to sniff out. Um so it's probably why she was able to like what if this is a bot and then type the type the command now there was there was another exchange that i don't know if i don't know if they're the same one or if if the first one that i saw was legit and then the second one was just like somebody like somebody was doing a bit going along with it but that was like a big topic of uh, interest on the uh on the timeline last week but yeah just want everybody to you know rodney king just want us all to get along you know what i'm saying but i know it's not reality but it's just this is kind of kind of sucks to see people beefing. And I don't want to jump in and be like, hey, be like, you know, the Jonathan Majors. <laughs> he broke up that fight and they put the emoji together. With the, like, I want to get in between people on the timeline and be like, yo, let's calm down. It's not my place. Mm-mm. But, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to watch. So I've been kind of in and out, in and out on threads. I just like clipped a few things today for the first time in probably probably a few weeks um, I take I had taken a break after the finals it took like a four or five day break um, but even since then haven't really been and I don't know if it's just you know it's off season or for the NBA and that's like really what gets me going or or what but I imagine it's just like yeah seasonal um how do we get here where are we how do i get here? um driving. i am driving am i doing well am i staying within the the white and yellow line ish uh summer league was cool it was great and um aaron was was fantastic uh garrett was out there but unfortunately we weren't able to to link up with him um so uh, it's looking less and less like my LA or West Coast trip will happen this year, but if it does, I'll have to uh, I'll have to get with him when I make it out there. Um, but the highlight of the Vegas trip, sweetheart, was the rooftop party that you were working that you went to to work at. I did look. I, I want to say I want research. I want to take y'all through this experience through my point of view <laughs> because there's there's always what happened there's Jessica's uh account of what happened and then there's always my point of view um my point of view is always closer to the truth than Jessica's than with the dramatic truth it's still the truth than oh, Jessica's nice. um because for some reason, my, the, my, anything that inconveniences me, it doesn't matter. 
as much as if something inconveniences Jessica. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why David's life doesn't matter, <laughs> and everybody else's does. But anyway, so Jessica's been talking up this party. No, I wasn't. Jessica, she's been talking this joint up like this, all week. Oh in, in another, in a manner of speak. No, what the party was. In a manner of speaking, it had been a topic of conversation for the entire week, right? Yes. That's more okay, what I meant. Okay. Okay. Um, so she didn't know where it I, I was thinking it was going to be like where the summer league games were taking place, like the Thomas and Mack Center. Um, I just knew that it was, it was an event. An activation or event slash activation. So Friday, Jessica, I think, figures out that it wasn't actually it hadn't taken place yet and that it was going to be off site um, on Saturday. So she was like she had messaged the uh, the contact for the uh, for the event and she had, she'd gotten pretty much the go ahead for us to come through. So I'm like, cool. Rooftop. And then, and then we found out the kind of venue was. I was like rooftop party, and then Jessica started showing me like uh, Instagram uh, pictures of the of the location. I'm, I'm hyped, and for me to be hyped about a public outing like where other people are going to be, you know, that I had to look like a grand old, grand old time. Take his being hyped with a grain of salt, yeah. Because this energy was none of the energy that I got. Well, because it was 150 million degrees. His hype. 150 million degrees. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was a little dehydrated. Carry on. Anyways, so we we, uh, we get dressed um, Saturday. We're like, okay, we'll we'll get breakfast. We'll go to the event, check it out, and then we'll get back to the uh, back to the arena to link with Aaron. So we had breakfast, and then we actually we had a cigar lunch first, in a very nice resort. Um, I hate that we didn't get to actually go into the smoke cigar lounge because they were doing a filming. And Jessica walked into it so i don't know i don't know what it was was being filmed but if you just happen to randomly come across some commercial or music video where you see some random chick in the background look like she's not supposed to be there that's just me i walked out all up in there oh my bad so we want to have some cigars and then we went we went to the venue which was obviously at another resort on the strip so i'm wearing slacks um what kind of I think I just had a regular black a black yeah. t-shirt on some some shoes. I figured that's a pretty safe uh attire when you're trying to get in somewhere. Um I always say if if it all fails look like you part of the staff. <laughs> just gray slacks, black shoes, black shirt. Somebody might mistake you for staff, kitchen worker, maintenance something. You get in there. No questions asked. So anyway. So we uh <laughs> we get to the resort of course, it's at the, the entrance at the back of the resort. So we walk to the back, we walk around, and then we see the line empty. Like nobody there. <laughs> no way, nobody there except the people working the line. We get up there and we're like, yeah, we're here for the rooftop, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, okay, we need your IDs. And then Shorty, she's like, you got swim trunks. And I thought she was just, you know, invested in my experience. Like she wanted to make sure that, you know, I was dressed for both, like just casual and, and swim. And I was like, no, I just got my slacks. And she was like, oh, well, you need swim trunks. And again, I think she, she's just really trying to tell me that, no, you really need some swim trunks because you really, the water is great. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm, she's like, no, it's dress code. <laughs> and I'm like, and it took me a bit of the process. I'm like, so slacks aren't acceptable. Dress is an acceptable outfit is what you're telling me. She's like, yeah, you're going to need, you're going to need um dress code and then jessica tried to say she was like oh well we're uh i'm with hennessy on part and then she was like that's great you still need <laughs> yeah <laughs> you still need swim trunks Respect. and so and so this is normally this is i'm gonna tell you how this kind of situation would normally go no with my no 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 no, 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 no this is how the situation would normally go with me and my wife jessica would fear like my whole mood just being blown. He'd be like, "Oh, do you want to? Do you want to leave? You want to just go?" And I would be like, "And I'd be like, yeah, because I'm not, I'm not going." And she was like, "Do you want to go back to the hotel and get your trunks?" Because I had swimming trunks in Vegas. I just didn't have them on my person. And I was like, "Well, it doesn't make sense to go because we weren't staying on the strip, so it doesn't make sense to go all the way back to the hotel." So I was annoyed. I was annoyed more at the fact that it took us a minute to find the spot. We found the spot, and then they were like. You have to have 
shorts on and it's just it is my pocket but maybe i don't frequent enough rooftop parties i, I mean lo- logically thinking about it makes it, 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 it makes make sense perfect sense it makes sense everything because i mean mind you i wasn't in a swimsuit i was in short yeah she was in short and i was in a tank top but i guess that's that's acceptable i guess that's so cool I, party clothes but they were like if did you look at the that was like real strict like you couldn't like have gum yeah that's why I, I was i was surprised. and i had just bought a pack i had just bought a pack of gum um no, he's leaving out the fact so this happened wait 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 wait, 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 wait. i'm not finished all right i'm gonna speak much you're not gonna suppress my truth all right i don't have i don't have reason to lie i'm sure so we're walking and in my mind i already i've already made up my mind that i'm just gonna buy some trunks at the spot at the resort and so I'm like, I'm, we're walking, like we're walking toward the door, but I'm just trying to find, I'm just trying to find a shop. I'm like, surely, you know, there's, there's a store in here that sells some drugs, likely with a 15, 20% upcharge, but neither here nor there. We're in Vegas. So we find Jessica's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, no, I'll just, I'll just, we'll just go get some, I'll get some trunks and then we'll, we'll go get it. So we walk into this store um, and the, there's like a section this wide and it's got all the swim trunks available. And it's really like two designs with different sizes. And so of course there's this dude standing there. Um, I either trying to find his size or trying to decide if he really wants the pair of swim trunks he has in his hand. And I get it. Like I've, I've been there, but after a certain time, like you, you, need, you need to make move. it, you need to move. And it's the dude, he was just standing there. <laughs> so I kind of like, Try to work around the the margins, trying to you know get where he wasn't. And then eventually he, he moved. And I was like, thank God. So I didn't want to make a big a big deal of it. Just grabbed some trunks that were my size. They were like flower was a floral print something. They're like tropical, tropical leaf, leaf. Like banana leaves. Yeah, whatever. So I just put them on. Um, I'm wearing a black shirt, black shoes. So anything in between will will work. Um, so we get in a line, and it's just some random. <laughs> some random white dude was just either drunk high both he was sloshed uh, he was like hey he was like hey bro them things right there them things is gonna work like they 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 go with your fit i was like i'm like thank you and uh, my dude i'm standing there so anxious because i know he's already in a mood yeah and of course the drunkest person in the resort is harassing him literally like i kept like oh yeah i appreciate it i kept like trying to end the no he was like he was like hey bro i'm drunk i'm drunk out of my mind i was like oh i couldn't tell <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps going and he was like you know where i'm at i'm like where he was like i'm outside <laughs> and he was like you can go in front of me i'm you just got the shorts and i'm like no i want you to go first like you please go in front but he wouldn't he said something about the shorts again and she was like again yeah he he would not he would not go in front of me so we finally get up there and we go um i try to pay but my card doesn't work because i'm like oh because i'm in vegas i didn't tell the bank so jessica has to pay for it um because she's my because i really really i'm just bumming out here like i'm a typical dude out here can't afford 30 dollars swim trunks you know what i'm saying like getting harassed by drunk pay- like it's just it's a lot going on but i told myself inevitably there are going to be moments that are trying where i <laughs> i naturally want to slip into one of my funks and i was like i'm not going to let that happen my wife is out here to work we're out here together we haven't had like a nice trip in a minute albeit you know the majority of it was for work i did not want any any beef so i was like i'm just gonna i took probably like three to five minutes to work through it and then it was it was good put the shorts back on or put the shorts on um we walked to the line and then and this is like this all happened in the span of like seven seven minutes maybe it was, yeah it was not even 10 minutes we get back to the line and it's like hey, everybody out the ass like i'm like where did all these people come from it's like maybe we came in at another point it was the same that's spot why the because because there was no one there was it was the same it was the same spot same spot and it was like 30 30 or 50 deep right so we get in line because now we meet we meet the attire right and i had planned have i seen the same chick i was gonna be like do i check out now am i good (laughs) but she wasn't there because she was scared but anyways um we get up to the line the front of the line they're like we need your ids like okay cool we can we can pass this test 
we hand them the IDs. And then I usually, when we're in these moments, especially when it's related to Jessica's work, I let her just go first because I, I don't deal well with, um, security. Mm -hmm. Like if I know I'm supposed to be somewhere, but the security person didn't get the message. Like I, my patience is just, it just evaporates and I have no idea why, but it's just how I am. I'm my mother's child. So let's get, let's, let, let's pray against that. Child. I let, I let her, I let her and I noticed we're not moving forward. Like Jessica's not moving. She's still talking to the person. Like it should have been, here's my ID picture matches the face. We, we progress. Jessica's not moving. And then I hear Jessica say, but we're here just for the, and so I was like, well, you still need, so apparently there was tickets, barcodes that we didn't have, as you're supposed to have, even though it was general admission open to the public, you still had to buy get to or get the public who bought tickets over to the public. Yeah. Who bought tickets. So I, I used to think open to the public was synonymous with free entry, <laughs> which I guess, I guess there's nuance to it. So I'm like, okay, so now we can't get in. So I'm like, cool. So I, we walk away. She's, she's doing her thing on the phone. I sit down. She's texting her her contact. And I'm like, man, if this if this person's like in the thick of the party, like she's probably not going to respond. But I forget that like this industry, you're always doing like multiple things at once. If you're if you're like a event planner or you're running something, like you're all, you're you're never not on your phone or in your phone. So she says she's the lady's trying to find some person who can let us in, and then she's like, oh, just tell them you're with Hennessy. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> just, oh, everybody knows. just tell them, just tell them you're with Hennessy. So I was like, okay, we'll see if that works. So Jess went in. She was like, I'm gonna try it. And then if it works, come on. And she was like, David, come on. So I'm like, cool, it worked. And then we got past one security. We went to the next security. And the security was like, what's your name? Jess goes like, well, we're with the client. We're with Hennessy. And then the guy was, he was checking his list. I'm like, why are you checking the list? If she says she was with like, are we, are we good? Are we not? It. Like, again, this is why I'm like, bro, why are you? I you told have to you have an exceptional amount of patience. I, got, I guess he does not. I don't not, not, not in these moments. I'm like, bro, we just told you we with Hennessy. So he's like, okay, you're good. We get patted down, hand them our bags. And I'm thinking my gun's going to get thrown out. Shorty. She left the gum. That was, shout out. Was like, dang, they're going to take his, yeah, he just spent like, I was already, I was there. already prepared to lose a gun. So shout out to her. She leaves the gum. So we go to the next checkpoint, uh, where they, they wind you down. Um, so I forgot I had my phone in my pocket. So I stuck my arms out. She wants, she's like, can you take everything out of your pocket? I'm like, so I take my phone out of my pocket. It's like, <laughs> that was so dramatic. I threw my hands up like this. No, she, she wants me down. She's like, turn around, turn around. She's like, are right, you good? And we get to the last piece of security. And they're like, who you with? Or what's your name? We're like, just like, we're with Hennessy. So he goes back to somebody and they're checking something and they let us in. So finally, after like four security checkpoints, we are, <laughs> They're thorough, and I can appreciate it. I, I honest, in it's all honesty, top. in all honesty, you, celebrities there, uh, NBA players there. I get it. You want to be, you ap absolutely want to be thorough. Um, so we get through the last security checkpoint, and we see Trey Young and his his people. Mm -hmm. Trey Young is drunk, very drunk or high. I didn't, yeah, he was. I didn't even see. Who you? Do you know who he is? I do. Know, okay, but I I was still also taller than like six one, six two, six three is like. He actually gave short to me, but he was, I mean, he was taller. He wasn't tall, but he was taller than I thought he would be. Like, I thought we'd be not eye level because I'm, I'm 5'11", but I didn't think that he would be as tall as he presented. Mm -hmm. um, I was just seeing people being shuffled to an elevator. So, yeah, we tried it. Was low key like. We were trying to go into one elevator and they're like, no, nah, that elevator don't work or something. So they tried to shuffle us to another elevator, but then they only wanted Trey and his people on the elevator. So, like. There's one security guard who was like making it very apparent that nobody else outside of the click, the Trey Young click, was gonna get on. I'm like, bro, I'm not even. You ain't gotta worry about me. Like, I just, I just, I just, snuck on. I just wanna get up. So they go up. Somebody comes down the same elevator that they said wasn't working. <laughs> What's it work? Stressed. And they were like, wait a minute, why is it? Why they come down this elevator? <laughs> so they finally send us up. We get up and we're just we're out there. And I'm like, thank God, because I didn't think we were ever gonna reach reach this moment so we get there um we're walking around jessica's kind of doing her thing just trying to get the lay of the land um i see jeff teague a uh, former nba player he's got a he's got a little vip section uh table Ten -ten. yeah so he was right he literally sitting right like right behind you when we got when we sat down in that in the second vip section 
they were the the section right behind us. But you don't know who Jeff T is, so you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have known. Which which movie the one facing the stage or the one we the one we we were sitting in? So we were the last one we were at. Yeah. The one to the left. So behind Before where we moved over? After we moved. Oh. There was a section table to the left of us. I thought they were regulars. Nah. You was regular. <laughs> Oh, was regular. You was regular. I was in there. You had you had to get in based on favor. I was VIP. Uh, so uh, we're looking for somebody we know or she knows, and I guess I think the first person we ran to was a, your photographer friend. Yes. Yes. Um, what was his name? Francis. Francis, uh, who was who was lovely, and then uh, she found somebody else. Yeah, because he was. I was trying to find him, and he was. I was like, he, ta oh. he tapped. He stopped you, right? We were, we were walking by him, and he was. I was like, no, I can't go in there, and he was like. Psh so he moves the stand. She was like, come on. And yeah. I was like, where's security? Because they didn't even, like, no one really. No security. Security. And there were players in that section, too. That's where Trey Young was. Oh, okay. He wasn't upstairs? Mm -mm. Somebody was upstairs. He was in the, so the one we walked into, mm -hmm. he, he was like, direct, directly to the left. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you wouldn't have known it because he was, like, in the yeah. dead middle of it. And everybody was, like. Thick around it. Around him. Um, so we meet her. We meet some other lady who kissed me on my cheek. Um. She was, she was nice. Um, beautiful curly brown hair. It's, just, it's, it's amazing, amazing fragrance she gave off. I got I can't forget that we have to pick our children up. Um and then we finally meet Jenny. Probably Jenna. Know, Jenna. Uh finally meet Jenna. Um Jess connects with her. Everything's going good. We get our we get our VIP wristbands and she's like, We got these three tables. Yeah, um, food had just come out because she was like eat. She was like eat. Hennessy, VSOP, XO, cock, like little little juice, like it, it was, was a VIP section. It was VIP, and yeah, we was in there. I was just all up in there, like in there. It I was great. Was the first is this the first proper VIP experience? Yeah, because the other one that we were talking about was whack. <laughs> oh, basic ass VIP. So man, don't even get me started. <laughs> you be trying to act like you all not you but the other people trying to act like they all big and bad because they ain't VIP it was a couch not like like a, a couch it was like a living room couch <laughs> somebody put in a, not, an old fake club like what's been couch feel like somebody uh, so had plastic yes, on it we were here we're sitting yes, there we, we're in VIP we're sitting there and then two chains just ends up on the stage two chains come up I didn't know he was. I knew he was performing. I formerly, I formerly known as, as Titty Boy. I think I assumed he was performing that night, which then, in retrospect, explained why they people needed tickets. Like this was like a legit day part. It was a day concert. Um, so he gets on. Is that Two Chains? And Dave was like, "Yes." Um, found out I actually know more Two Chain songs than I thought I knew. Um, so he performed DJ set. I mean, it was, and because like. If we didn't have the VIP section, I don't know that we would have stayed long because I'm I'm just not one to be outside in the heat with common, without any kind of with, amenity. With common people, um, with, with basic yeah, basic right. people, but she's everywhere. <laughs> and that was a good part. Just what? Just a good part of it. Yeah, there were a lot of but it was great great experience. But then there was some. It was like probably shouldn't have your butt cheeks out. It, equal opportunity butt cheeks, but where we were sitting. The AC from the building was coming kind of at the back of us. So we yeah. were like, we were in the shade. We were comfortable. Um, it was great. Yeah, got it the, was, got the it was good. with a lot of people. Uh, introduced myself, reintroduced myself to to a lot of people. So it was it was it was overall good. Like it was great. Honestly, it was great. I'll and I'll even take I take the I'll take the experience leading up to being able to get into the party hundred times over. It was that it was it was I had that much fun. Really? Yeah, and and you don't got to be like, yeah, you literally uh, just sat, you know, wilding out, rah, rah. you know, pouring drink. Like you don't got to be doing all that. Like for me, I don't have to be doing that to like really enjoy myself. It's all about the vibe. It's everybody having a good time. There's no fights. Like it's just everybody was nice. It's like all, all the circumstances were just were just dope. And I don't get a lot of opportunities to do that. You probably find yourself in more spaces than me, just based upon, um, <clears throat> you know, that's that's your space, but. I don't, I was, 
I enjoyed it. For I was me, very, it was like seeing very work. happy. Like I got to a lot of times when these type of activations are happening for work, I'm also like actively hands on working, but my activation was taking place somewhere else. So I right. got to see this activation and see and kind of had to look from a consumer perspective how are consumers enjoying this yeah how am i enjoying this and you know i don't always get to reap the fruits of you know the labor but it, it was nice to do that and just you know share that with you because that's not not typically a scene that you would you would put yourself in so you know outside of your comfort zone but still being able to be comfortable it was a good time indeed um i would have made it better if i had brought a cigar up there couldn't smoke that was one thing I did see. Oh, there's people up there smoking cigars. Really? I've seen like six people with cigars. At the top? Yeah. Oh, you probably have to go to the top. No. Wait. Walking like where we were. When I read their they're frequently asked questions. It says tobacco use. I bet you didn't say anything about not being able to wear slacks either. <laughs> I didn't look. I didn't look. Um, I seen like five dudes with cigars. Like, and not even trying to hide it either. Like they were just out like smoke. Hmm. But I probably couldn't. I probably couldn't have done it where we were. Definitely not in the VIP. So um no it's fine. But segueing because we got we got to wrap this up. Um while we were there cuz this was Saturday. Saturday afternoon. Mm. Um apparently the DJ said it. He did. Jessica heard it. I guess other people heard it. I didn't hear. I was I'm not going to lie to y'all. <laughs> I was probably on my second cup of VSOP. Cup. And Second he was drinking cup. neat. He wasn't mixing. No, I wasn't mixing. I don't, I don't mix no, glasses on. He was just, and he I, I was. I was. He was VIP. I was vibing. I was. I was vibing. I didn't get to see vibe, David. So I was. I wasn't. I was there. I was present. Mm -hmm. But I was just vibing. I was just really taking it in. I was immersed in just the vibes. Uh, so I heard the DJ because you hear everything you hear. But you, are you listening? But I wasn't. I wasn't. Comp I wasn't listening, processing what he was saying. And so you know me, um, can't you know just tethered to my. I'm tethered to my phone. I open up Threads to see what's going on, and I people people saying like, "Oh, this is going to be a big test for Threads," or "Oh my gosh, Threads is already botching this." And I'm like, "What is going on? Like, what are these people talking about?" And so I pull down to refresh. I'm just being dramatic. Um, and then I see a picture of your boy with blood on the side of his face. And I'm like, and, then for, and you know, the today's where I'm like, okay, is this AI? Like, is this real? Does this is actually happen. And then I keep reading like Trump shot at rally. Trump tried to rally Trump. I'm like, what? Somebody tried to take Trump out. And the judge was like, yeah, the, the DJ said it like five minutes. <laughs> so and I'm going, I'm, I'm reliving, so I'm delicious. living what everybody else already well, processed like five minutes before me. So everybody's looking at me like, bro, we. Oh, I think only the people in the VIP processed it because the DJ was like, Trump, your president Trump got shot and it keeps going. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not from Vegas. I don't know Vegas culture. Like, I mean, every city has its thing. And I feel like Vegas is a party city. So maybe that's like, they're, they're like, yo, President being shot up in this piece. Well, like, I don't know. So I thought nothing of it. I heard him say it. I heard him say the president, like, Trump got shot. But he com continued with he's, the DJ. He's kept, it was a drive-by drive -by news drop. If, some, if a president gets shot, the DJ is supposed to, like, record scratch and, like, I'm sorry to have to inform yeah, DJ, you. DJ kept rolling. <laughs> Former president, presidential nominee has been shot. Nah, he just kept it moving. So <laughs> this is really, and clearly that's what happened because I didn't know. So I'm over here. It's like, um, it's like the old internet, uh, not the internet. Yeah, the Internet Explorer joke with the browsers. Um, everybody else has already got the news. And I'm like, Trump got shot. Yeah. <laughs> the dude in front of me was like, yeah. <laughs> so and so, um, and so I'm sitting here like, Wow. Like I want this is my new favorite thing to tell Jessica whenever like a massive event happens, like this is history. Like we're living in history. And um we're having we're we're being light about it, right? Um, because it's how we attack most try to attack most things, try to find the humor in things. Obviously it's very serious. Um it 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 is uh um it capsules no, no, the word I want to use. It uh it 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 really speaks to where we are. 
obviously we're we're the gun country um but that somebody like literally tried to like bullets apparently like went by trump's head Mm -hmm. um which is how his ear got got nicked uh allegedly i guess it's crazy um and the fact that he was able the shooter was able to get all like obviously stuff was coming out people said they saw guy going up the side of the the building and they tried to tell police police didn't do anything a cop went up the ladder and the guy pointed the rifle at him the cop was like nope not today <laughs> bounced and then that's when the shots went off so maybe maybe that cop still saved his life saved trump's life because the maybe the shooter was rushed like i'm assuming like this he is the, somebody else would be yeah good. so he went ahead and tried to try to get try to get the the shots off but um you know two believe what two people died um the the, old, the firefighter and the crowd who jumped on his family. I think some one person was critically injured. I don't know if they ended up passing or not. Hopefully not. And then obviously the shooter. Um, so it's, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's serious. Uh, and it's just, it's just sad, man. But I'm kind of worried. I feel like this is like one of those inflection points in history where like if he loses or damned either way so i'm, I'm okay <laughs> all right um like, i don't know i just don't know what because people are i mean january 6th was a thing it happened mm-hmm. uh and however you feel about you know whether he actually led it or not like people were those were his people. Uh, I seen the Trump flags. <laughs> so it's just, it's really volatile time right now. I feel like, um, and I got to tell you, I never, I never thought I would live to see an assassination, assassination, um, attempt. I figured like if one didn't happen during Obama's time, like, you know, we, yeah. we were good. <laughs> like pins and needles. I, I, I figured we figured we were good. and that's not to say that there weren't some that were like planned, but mm-hmm. you know, they X-X. got sniffed out. Yeah, they got sniffed out before they could ever get off the ground. But um to see one like actually an attempt go go through, it was crazy. Um this is this is so wild to me. And uh um and that kind of speaks to uh, what I was mentioning earlier about threads is that a lot of like people are just starting to like unload like their their social beliefs, political beliefs. Mm. Um, and that's just causing natural friction because, you know, a lot of people treat social media, especially like a text based social media like threads is somewhat of a diary. They're just putting their thoughts out. Oh, yeah. Um, the danger of that is if you're not private, <laughs> other people, other people see it. And, you know, it's hard to argue against there's really no logic in oh i know this is a public platform but i don't expect anyone to respond to my very public thoughts that i put out because there's always going to be if 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 you can't guarantee anything in life there's always going to be that one person mm-hmm. um who's going to either misconstrue or feel like <laughs> you're talking about them or whatever yeah, so I don't even know you. um there's just been a lot of like people are kind of just throwing stuff out and then that one person get jumps in. It's like, so what are you, what are you doing about, or what are you saying? Why are you saying this? And, and shit just kind of goes. So, um, I imagine that's only going to ratchet up, uh, two and maybe even through November. So thank God. Uh, hopefully you're taking me out of the country again for my birthday. What about your children? So we don't have to be, I mean, they'll be all right. So that we don't have to be here if stuff pops off. No, we'll we'll send for them. Um, but yeah, they try to take your boy out. Okay, I'm not voicing my opinions on this matter. I'm choosing not to. Why? I just uh, I I kind of got into this place where I I'm not concerned. Not I'm not really concerned about the government. Like you know the. The Bible says, pray for your leaders. I'll pray for whoever's president. Um, But I'm just in this mindset of like, God has me. So I don't have the energy or time to worry about all of this other 
project this and that and this person, that person. I, I, I look, today has enough it's very, for it. I know, it's very apathetic. I mean, I'll vote. It's very, it's very, do. It's very privileged. It is very privileged. And I thank God that I, I have the opportunity to be sit in that. there, Sit there in your privilege. Yeah. Mm. I'm not mad about it. So... So yeah, I, I'm not mm-mm, not doing it. My peace of mind is. I mean, I think political peace, political conversations are too political. Political. Uh, I don't. I don't need that. Well, I mean, I don't think anybody takes us for strateg- political strategists or anything like that. I think we're just two American citizens who, from time to time, speak their mind on social and political happenings. Um, I do think it's important to. Uh, to be informed of certain platforms mm-hmm. and certain things that are going on. Um, hopefully you're not unaware. You're just not, you're choosing not to speak your thoughts on those mm-hmm. things, which I think is, is perfectly fine and it's your right. Um, but as long as it doesn't lead to just like straight um, ignorance, I think that's, that's fine because you know, we got kids and we got to, we got to know what's going on so that we can make the correct moves to give them the best and brightest future possible. Um, That's why they all have passports. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause uh, that's just the answer. To, that's just the answer to everything. Just run. Day when the, if just things, run. If things hit the fan, we, we out, we out here. Yeah, I can go. We will keep them. I'm staying with my guy. You know how long it took me to get the gigabit internet. You think I'm just give that up? Yes. I would think you would. <laughs> 10 gigs that's right nah, babe. It's a handmade still nah well I'd, I'd be all right then no they need you to work too so what yeah you never they put the black people to work they put the men to work if you're not like a government official what about the dude how he how do get in the spot though his position which dude the governor whoever was banging what's her face trying to get trying to get her pregnant he was security he was security i thought he was like a governor or a mayor or something so who was in charge I mean, there were people. You gotta watch the show. There's a hierarchy of people. I mean, there are black people in charge, but like. Okay, that's good. The, the, the <laughs> work, <laughs> I thought he, I thought it was like because I was black, they would have put a, no, put me to work. No, right? Just, I'm like, damn. And y'all, I was about to say, y'all ate that up. No, y'all were watching watch willingly, watching that. Go watch it over here, putting black people back in the fields. Nah. I mean, they were in fields, but there were white people in fields too. Okay. Latinos, Asians. There was just an opportunity. Um. Yeah, it'd be hard for me to give up my gigabit internet. My my Google, my fiber, fiber you don't optic think the internet. Government's just gonna take that from you. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can stay around. They might need a. They might need an informant. I'll be a snitch for my internet. For my internet, I'll be a snitch. Hey, especially <laughs> here first. Especially if they comp it. She. Y'all heard. I'll take free gigabit internet. Um. All right, it's. I gotta go pick up children. Um, but this was downside about. Oh, I mean, if we had been able to film, yeah, we'd been able to film earlier. I call from a like this was supposed to be my lunch break. It's supposed to be, and I got a call. Not that I take lunch. Breaks. So look, um, and that call was like <laughs> it just kept going. I was over there. Like, oh yeah, I was. I, I, I was asleep. I thought it was gonna end, and it was just like, so what else? So what? Else? And I was like, there legitimately is I got, nothing else. I think you just enjoy talking. To I got tired. I got tired of waiting, so I just I started watching shoots, and the next thing I know. I was asleep, but I heard her. She did something when she came out into the kitchen. And I, I woke up because um, I had set everything else up with the anticipation of us recording at a certain time. So, uh, but we got we got to run. You know, this is episode ninety nine. Oh wow! This is the pen. I don't want to say penultimate because we're not done at a hundred, but um, it's. So, do we start a new season at a hundred? I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing at this point because technically this should be a new season since we took four months off. But um, next, the next episode that we air, I'm not saying it's going to be next week. I'm just saying the next episode that we put out will be episode 100. Um, and I'll save my my thoughts for uh, what how I feel about that, uh, or at least the majority of my thoughts for for next episode. But um, I'm just really proud that we've done done this. We've kind of definitely have have I won't say slacked off because it's not like we've just been doing nothing. But um, well, at least one of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's 
like when I think about learning about cameras and pushing audio and like that doesn't even factor in like the editing. Um, and even you, like when we used to breathe into the mic <laughs> and me learning how to find software settings that'll take it out because you still do it from time to time. It's just it's just been a journey. And I'm just happy that I've been able to do it with you. I a hundred episodes is not insignificant. Um, so go us. Uh so seeing as we've been out for a while, um, not sure how many people this will go out in front of, but uh if you enjoy the episode, uh, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube or also on Apple Music and Spotify. And you can find us on threads. I'm at Yo Rush. She's at J J three J E J three S S S S Rush. Uh, we're on there. I'm on there more than she is, but that's because her job is more important than mine. I've been dabbling. I'm getting back. I'm getting back. But it's been it's been a long time. Uh, it feels good to be back. To have been back. I'm gonna edit this today, tonight. Uh, hopefully, have it out. Maybe put it out tomorrow. Just what? if I get it done tonight, I might put it out tomorrow. Uh, uh, but we appreciate everybody who's been on the ride with us, who watches, listens faithfully. I'm um, sorry we've been gone for so long and without reason, but uh, life just lifed. Yeah, it did. Oh, and yeah, that's all I... I got my nose pierced for my 30th Just Oh, birthday. yeah, she got a nose pierced. Mexico. I can't wait to tell you all the story about it. Yeah, she let some I'm random Mexican... Tattoo artist. She let some... Streets of Cabo San Lucas. She let some I'm random Mexican dude fondle her nose. Fondle? And didn't, didn't tell me. But yeah, he fondled it. You got a video of it. After the fact. I told you. And I got it from somebody else. I didn't get it from you. But I did it. I finally did it. You better hope I won't ever see him. And I realized it's on my my camera side. So yeah, people are like, oh my god, Jessica got a new tattoo. Um, Am I supposed to be on a call? Uh oh. So yeah, that's episode ninety nine. Uh, we'll see y'all next time <laughs> for episode one hundred. I don't know if we're gonna do anything special. You'll just have to wait and see. But I appreciate y'all. We out. Peace. Hey. 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 I done came way too far, can stop me now. I done came way too far, can stop me now. I done came way too far, can stop me now. I done came way too far, can stop me now. Can stop me now. Can stop me now. Yeah, I done came.